Let's start a new hands on. So this time it was the master wage DFU host. Uh, so that means we want to update uh, the firmware which is inside our boards. So what is we will create a first firmware that is able to detect a USB key. On this USB key you can read a file which is the future firmware you want to run on your target. You can read it and we'll flash it at a specific location and after on the next boot we can push the button and jump to this new firmware. So it's a way to update the firmware on your target. It's a really common usage or use case that is needed when you need to update. It's also what we call an in-application programming. That means it's from the application that is inside you can program the flash and boot on it. So let's see how we'll do this. Um, as it's written there, we will reuse the previous console we have done, the master wage host, because it's always the same mechanism to detect a USB key. We've got the file system to read a file, and then once we have read this file, we will flash it at a specific location. A only binary format, just to have something very simple to do together, for sure. So let's skip all this part which describe uh, what needs to be done because I already done it. We already did it for you. Um, just some information about what we prepare for you. Uh, we are expected to have uh, at the root level of the USB key a file image.bin uh, that will be written in our flash uh, after we proceed of the firmware. Uh, we proceed the, update, the firmware update. Sorry. We will see much more in details. Um, I think I've got nothing else to do. Oh, we already deal with it in the master which host. So let's switch to Atolic. So let's import the archive we prepare to you. Next one. Okay. I take it always at the same location. Let's see. USB training and the one and DFU host. Finish. So if we compare with the previous hands on, mm, nearly the same structures for sure, because it's exactly the same infrastructure, you can see a new file which is flash underscore ef.c. Just something we provided to you. It's just a level of abstraction to access the flash to read it and to write in it. So we can erase the sectors, we can write in it, we can get the sectors. And it's just to, I will say, simplify uh, our project. So now let's see in the main, just to describe what this application is doing. First, when we boot, we initialize everything for sure. And if you will press the blue button, you will jump to the new application, which should be at this location, already defined. Okay, it was in the second sector. Okay, so we reserve uh, for our application these first sectors, and the application that will be downloaded will be in the second sector. On other boot, if you press the button, you jump to this new firmware, or you keep in this uh, in-application programming process. So the in-application process is just there. Here again, so we just boot it without pushing the button and the USB is ready. As soon as we detect a key, we know that the Apple state will become an application ready. That means we are ready to do something. If we press the button and release it, and then we can access the file on the USB key. So as said, the name is artcoded image.bin. This is just an example because it's something that you can take and modify if you need and just to make you understanding, I would say, the principle. So we open it for sure. We can read it. We can read the different action to first, it was just erase the sector because we want to erase if there is a previous uh, firmware. It's something we will need to do. And then we can see here the common program flash memory where we will read the different address 
and then with the F read, and then we will program to have the different action we, are, we have to do. So let's check our um, our task to do. Uh, sorry, I'll mess it. Mm. Okay, so here we got three tasks to achieve this hands-on. The first one was to I increase the size. Sorry about it. To errors because we need first to errors the sector. So to do it, okay, I tell you that we already have some flash interfaces with a different function. So first we have to unlock the flash, then we will error the sector. And we just give the errors the sector address that we need to errors. So okay, let's do it. Okay. So first let's unlock it first. I'm lazy and I don't want to, to type everything <laughs> as usual. Here first I unlock the flash. Okay. Oh sorry. That's good. Then, uh, once we have done this, we just need, I will say, to erase it. So let's check it. Flash interfaces. Copy. Post. Okay. The address will be the address of our application. So we have seen it before. Um, if I will remember, it should be there. Application address. Post again. And then the return value, I don't remember it, so let's check. Error sector. Okay, zero if it's success. from zero then let's put some error message uh, okay for error message I'll keep it uh, let's say something like errors failed um, let's get stuck there We've got an issue. I prefer not to go further if we don't even manage to erase the sector for sure. I think that's all for the first action. Yeah, we erase it. Good. So let's come back to the second action. So now we are in the common program flash memory. So here we open the file. So and we read, I will say, uh, buffer by buffer in the in the F read, and now we just need to flash this. Uh, so let's do it. So okay, we've got the interfaces. So flash interface if right we need to address and first as first argument and then the data so let's pass it okay so the address when we want the flash let's see the RAM address is the buffer the address of the application is where we want to flash okay then we can see that this one will be upgraded with the different size that of, of what have been already flashed. So here it was this one first. And here we've got a counter to I will say path the buffers. So address after address. So we've got the program counter need to be added to this address. I think that's it for 
the first argument here where we want to flush. And what we want to flush. So here you can see we've got the RAM address which is a pointer on the buffer. So let's take this one. And then we just need to parse it. So we need also to add the program counter. And we need to, this is just the address, and we need to take the content of this. Oops, sorry. Mm, yeah, maybe a cast would be better just to ensure we are new in 32. Pointers. Okay. I think let's take if it's different from zero. I hope it was the same logical like previously. And then if we've got an issue, let's do some traces again. Oh, sorry. So let's take another message from here. And this time just say flash right fade. Okay, and um, let's get stuck here. Point one. Okay, let's read it again. The address with the program counter should be okay. There are no pointers directly the RAM address per the program counters. Hmm, that's look good. Okay, let's sell this. Okay, so now I will say all the code is ready to flush our content. Uh, the next thing that we want to modify is to do the jump on the user application on the next boot. So if we click just on it, let's see what we've got to do. So here I give you some information in the comments uh, where you can find the address to jump in the application. First, the, at the application address plus four, you will have the entry point, so where you need to jump. The stack pointer address will be available at this address, okay? And to set the stack pointers, you've got this function. So I would say mainly what we will have to do. We just have to get the uh, entry point for sure. Then we have to set the, um, the stack pointer and then we can jump at this location that we read just before. I already defined for you some variable that we can use, jump to application and the jump address. So first, let's get the, the jump address. So jump address, where it is? Oh, it just say that it was at this location. So let's take this. Let's take the content of this location and um, I think it would be better to cast a little bit just to ensure we don't have any issue on it so it was a pointers on you in 32 pointers something like this it's already written there so I'm a little bit not a little bit I'm fully lazy past here yeah got it so let's check the brackets. Okay, so here just so here we've got pointers, take address. So this is our jump address for sure. After we've got a variable jump to application, it's just a pointer of fun and function. How you can see it. So it just we need to convert, I would say this address in a pointer in function. So let's do it there just a cast operation p function function and then the jump address okay so now we're ready to jump but before jumping we have to set the stack pointer so Let's do it. 
we've got the function already defined for you here um, it will be at this address so let's just do it that way with the past okay I think it's good and then let's jump in the action in the in the function I think that's it okay so I propose we try to compile I hope I don't have made too much mistake a little bit slow this morning okay mm. why it's so slow oh oh sorry I will try again build the project I hope I don't have a problem with my PC. Mm -hmm. Okay, just very slow. Sorry about it. I should have too much task on my PC. Warning, but the build is finished. Good. Mm, just have a look. Oh, this difference warning. Yes, it was a to do that I live. I hope I don't have any issue. Okay, so let's flash it. Um, sorry, do some debugging. Okay, the flash is ongoing, and I start the application. So now let's open our Terra term. Mm. So don't forget you need to just to check what is the compose that is used by your application. Um, now let's prepare our USB key with our binary. Sorry, I forget this point because we want to update something. So if I just show you um, in C, okay, USB training in the hands on. Here we've got here, and I prepare for you the binary should be just in help. Oh, not up, sorry. Um, Okay, you've got the USB key here. Yeah. So I just plug a USB key. So the removal disk, and I just take this one and copy it to my USB key at the root level, as expected. That's it. So let's unplug it. So now I plug the USB key to my board. So first we can see that there is detection, application is ready. So press the blue button to start firmware update. So I press and release it. The downloading is ongoing. Okay, good. No error messages. So it's a good chance to work. So now we will uh, push the blue button and push the reset. Release the reset by um, keeping the blue button. And you can see on your board that there is two LEDs that are blinking. We have updated this firmware. So I would say mainly that's it. You've got a firmware uh, update that has been done by your application. Um, 
as you can see, you know, it's not so much complicated and very interesting. Okay, that's it.